Hello, uh, welcome to the Grad Alting Workshop Series. Um, today's topic is credit scores. Uh, my name is Debbie McCutsky, and I'm the Coordinator of Services and Programs for Graduate Student Legal Aid. Um, I use she, her pronouns, and I'm glad that you're watching today. Um, uh, my assistant today is Simone Durham, and she is a graduate student advocate on our team. Before we talk about credit scores, I want to remind you about legal aid. What do we do? How can we help you? Well, we can help you if you have a legal issue and want to talk with an attorney. Um, if you have an immigration issue, we have an immigration attorney that you can meet with. Um, when you get charged by the Office of Student Conduct with a violation of the Code of Conduct or the Code of Academic Integrity, we can give you some support. Um, if you need a notary, that's another service we provide. Um, and if you've paid your graduate student fee, then you've already paid for our services. There is no additional charge. Um, you can learn more about who we are and what we do. Just visit our website, which is at GLA, I'm sorry, gradlegalaid.umd.edu. And um, you'll find instructions for how to request an appointment on there. Uh, let's see, now for a bit of housekeeping. Um, automatic closed captioning has been enabled. Um, and at the near the end of the workshop, we're gonna ask you to complete a survey because we want your feedback. We wanna know, what did you think of the workshop? What else can we do to help you? We would email links to the survey, the slides, and the recording um, either this afternoon or tomorrow morning to everyone who registered. And we will also post all those links on our website. So, um, and finally, if you have questions during the workshop, feel free to post them in the chat and we will ask them of our speaker. So finally, it's time to move on to our speaker. Her name is Khadija Kamis, and she is a financial capability intern for the Cash Campaign of Maryland. Um, Khadija, I know that you have much to share about credit scores, um, but first I want you to tell us a little bit about yourself and, and about the Cash Campaign of Maryland. Sure. So actually, that's where I'll start off with the presentation. So right. I'll just jump right into it. CASH is an acronym that stands for Creating Assets, Savings, and Hope. And we're based in Baltimore, but we serve all of Maryland. And we have a lot of different partners in the different counties that work on the same mission of financial stability for low to moderate income families and individuals. So there is a lot of different services that we offer, but the most well-known one is probably the free tax preparation and um, the tax sites will actually be wrapping up and closing soon, but um, that's where we have a, like free tax prep during the tax season. We also do financial education workshops like this one. We have benefit screening where we um, screen individuals for over 20 uh, public benefits and then start to help with the application process if needed. We offer, we through our partner, we offer financial coaching or planning. And then we have a lot of other different programs, but those are kind of like our main ones. So going into introductions, I'll introduce myself. Um, my name is Khadija, I am, interning at the cash campaign, and I'm also a full-time graduate student at the University of Maryland, Baltimore, studying social work. And I think um, most people might not be uh, aware of kind of just like what that connection might be with social work and, and finances or um, social justice issues and how that relates to finances. But that's the lens that I, that I try to bring and have, um, that consideration when working with clients or when um, doing like 
education classes because there are a lot of systemic issues that get in the way of people being able to manage their finances. And jumping right into it, um, talking about the determinants of challenge credit. So um, there are economic factors, sociological ones and psychological ones. And these kind of all connect with each other in different ways and making people um, kind of have uh, maybe lower confidence or um, lower access or ability to having um, like a stable financial uh, situation and, and working through navigating any challenges. So just knowing that it's complicated and it's almost by design really um, and not really meant to serve the individual, but like the businesses and the different things that go into like this, the system. And so just knowing that um, if it seems confusing, if it seems challenging, um, it is and you're not alone. So going into a credit score, it's um, very like plainly, it's a snapshot of your um, kind of a, like history of um, of borrowing and there are these ranges that give a like really quick, where are you in that range and um, share kind of with someone that might be interested in um, providing you with, with credit, kind of what your, um, what the likelihood of your ability to repay that credit is. And so this kind of ties into the, um, the last slide and how there might be some challenges where um, if people had lower un like financial education growing up or not understanding kind of how this factors into um, like different financial decisions factor into their credit scores. And then as an adult later on trying to figure out how to navigate that. Um, and then there's also kind of like the psychological issue um, concern of like, like it's, if you're under like like rated poor or fair, um, just kind of like what that might do to a person's like how they feel about navigating their finances. So going into kind of how that score is put together, this is the breakdown for the FICO score. And there are other um, companies that do like calculate the score. Um, but largely it's not really um, like well known kind of what that, what really goes into that score calculation. This is just kind of like an overall snapshot of it. And so the biggest component is payment history and followed by like amounts owed. And then there are the other components of new credit, length of credit history and credit mix that go into um, what your final credit score is. So this was one of the questions that someone had asked in terms of a possible reason that a credit score dropped. And so I'll pause briefly to give people a chance to um, maybe take a guess or if they have previous experience of what that was like to get a sense of, um, of what it might, what some of the possible reasons are. I'll just chime in, Khadija. Okay. I think your credit score drops when you miss a payment on, you know, your mortgage or a car payment. Yeah, so that's one of them. Um, and it ties back into that breakdown of what goes into a, a credit score. So um, credit uh, payments being one of the components. And if you are late or miss a payment, that could impact your credit score. Um, and then also if you've applied for a lot of credit um, or your credit utilization rate has increased. I also, that ties into like your, if your credit limit has decreased, then that would um, generally increase your credit utilization rate unless you adjust for that. But 
Um, that could also be a factor that goes into it, closing an old credit card. Um, and then if there's a mistake on your credit report. And so transitioning into credit reports, I think that um, like something that's important to differentiate is there's a credit score and a credit report. And the credit score is a snapshot of what's in your credit report. And that report is like pretty comprehensive um, in terms of what um, your previous uh, history is. And depending on which report you're, you're reviewing, there might be different information um, depending on which uh, places are reporting to that institution. And so the three big ones are um, listed on the screen, but I'm going to give it, people a chance to guess if they know what it is. I can guess this one. They are Experian, Equifax, and um, the third one. I think it's called TransUnion, the third one. Yeah. So these companies, they are gathering that information about you and compiling this credit report. And that's something that we'll go into later on that you have access to, um, to review it and to make any corrections if necessary. Um, and like I mentioned, like they're not identical and that's dependent on which places or institutions are reporting to these bureaus. And so I remember hearing um, a bank employee saying that they only report to one of these because it costs them a fee to, to do it, so like their businesses. Um, so just knowing that there might be a difference in what's reported but um, in each of these scores, but um, these scores are available, to, or these reports, excuse me, are available to you to review. And that ties into the Fair Credit Reporting Act. So you have rates and um, being able to navigate um, just the credit reporting system and reviewing what's what your information is and being able to dispute any um, inaccurate information. So some of the components of the credit is credit report is your identifying information, potential negative items, accounts, requests for your credit history or inquiries, and consumer comments. So this kind of goes into it a little bit more in terms of um, the accounts are listed in your in your credit report that are in good standing and if there are any that are delinquent. Um, or any accounts that are in collections. And then in terms of public records um, for bankrupt bankruptcies are the only ones that should appear. But that, again, like review, like what's in your report and if there's any inaccurate information or something that should be off it, then um, you have rights to be able to, to um, correct that. So there's a difference between a soft inquiry and a hard inquiry. Um, so the main one would be like soft inquiries don't impact your credit score and hard inquiries um, potentially could um, depending on how many are being made. So just being aware of that. Um, So what's not on the report is uh, non-credit banking information and beliefs and affiliations. So there are other people who can uh, view your report. And I know um, for like, if you're applying for like an apartment, um, that's something that, that they've asked um, or like depending on certain jobs, um, it, yeah, they should inform you of um, what your your rights are and, um, and you should just be aware in, in making like informed decision. I have a question, Kadisha. 
if a landlord wants to see your credit report, do you have to give them permission or how, how does that work? Do you know? Yeah. Um, I, we'll look into that. Okay. That's fine. We can share that information um, after the workshop. We'll put it on our website. Okay. Just made a note of it. So going into um, actually being able to view your credit report on annualcreditreport.com, you're able to um, pull one of your of one of your credit reports from each of the major bureaus. Um, and I think since the pandemic, and I think last I checked, um, moving until the end of 2023, um, you can pull a free report weekly and to help people with um, just being able to review their, their credit report and make any changes. So if there is a, um, if there is incorrect information, um, please inform the credit company in writing and then provide any evidence requesting that it is removed and then provide and then send that information out. And um, I would also like say like maybe make a note of it and, and just remember um, to remember to check if it has been removed later on or if there are any next steps that need to be taken. So you can put a credit freeze um, on your credit. So new credit isn't open until you uh, unfreeze it and um, you would need to call or or contact the three uh, credit bureaus to do that. And that could help with preventing identity theft, which could prevent um, like maybe some inaccurate information being pulled, being put on your credit report that you would then need to work on taking out. Um, so there is a pop quiz question. Is there a fee to freeze or unfreeze your credit? I'm gonna take a guess. Okay. And I bet there's a fee for at least for either freezing or unfreezing. Yeah, I uh, thank you for um, for taking a guess. I think that might have been the case previously, but last I checked, um, it should be free to freeze or unfreeze your credit. All right. Good to know. Thank you. Mm -hmm. So wrapping up in terms of um, best practices, so just making sure that you're um, doing what you need to do to manage your, your credit report and credit score um, and just the different components that we talked about earlier in terms of like what impacts that. Um, and there are yeah, like hopefully ways to be able to um, build that into like a routine or just to to work on, on reviewing that. Um, and then keeping it low, your balance, um, and then like keeping it up in terms of having um, credit history. So, um, and that, that information is um, accurate. So that's all for this presentation. For more information, you can go to MD Cash Academy, and that's where we have um, free financial education classes that either we um, are presenting or our partners are presenting at. And uh, we're nearing the end of tax season, but I put it just in case, um, if not for this time, for another tax season that there are tax um, free tax preparation appointments. Um, 
yeah, that is all. Thank you. Cash Campaign is an amazing resource. Um, I've looked at your website and wow, there, there is something for everyone, whether or not you are, are in financial trouble or not. There's just great information. So I'm so glad you could present this workshop today, Khadija. Um, I hope that folks will check their credit scores as soon as they're done, right? <laughs> um, with all three. And um, because it, it does impact your life and your ability to rent an apartment or get a job or get a mortgage. So thank you so much, Khadija. Thank you for having me. And thank you, Simone, for helping out. Um, thanks to everyone who's watching this. Um, it's good for us to spend time together. Um, come back here next Tuesday, April 18th. We are going to talk about wills and estate planning. And no, you are not too young to have a will or an estate plan. Please join us next Tuesday. Um, remember to complete the post-workshop survey, even if you're just watching this recording, because we need your feedback. So have a good week, everyone. And as always, let us know how legal aid can help you. Take care.